Welcome to part two of our look inside Ripley's Aquarium of the Smokies. Part one covers the tropical Amazon rainforest, the colorful coral reefs, and we left off under the perilous but still fun Shark Lagoon. And we are continuing with the Gallery of the Seas, a rotunda of some of nature's strangest works of art. But first, right past one of your last chances to see the sharks, is an unsigned mini coral reef with clownfish, tangs, chromuses, and the beautiful mandarin fish. Officially kicking off the circle is the red lionfish, one of the most venomous fishes in the world. How bad could a sting be? Well, they've been described as just short of making someone go completely mad. And with them are spotted scorpion fish. We know they're also venomous and now know they're experts at giving Catherine a good scare. And continuing this theme of being beautiful but harmful are Pacific sea nettles. Their tentacles that can get up to 10 feet long have special cells and within them are tiny harpoons full of venom. When triggered by touch, they shoot out and can penetrate human skin in an instant. Next, you might not find their husband, but you will find the Old Wife, an Australian ray-thinned fish. Their name refers to the sound they make when caught on a hook caused by their grinding teeth. And yes, they are also venomous. From the Mediterranean to South Africa are the not-so-cuddly European cuttlefish, a mollusk encephalopod that's colorblind, yet has excellent eyesight and can change shape, color, and rapid movements for communication and courtship. Following is a kelp tank for anemones, china rockfish, and copper rockfish. Of course, their octopus didn't feel like showing off that day. And completing the circle is the Commerson's frogfish, which really does resemble frogs. They have unique pectoral and pelvic fins that act like legs, allowing them to walk and keep a stable position when they need to ambush. And front and center, the Japanese spider crabs, spanning up to 13 feet across leg to leg. Unsurprisingly, they are the largest of the world's 50,000 plus crustaceans. And just about everyone that you see in an aquarium will eventually outgrow their tank. And now the Gallery of the Seas turns into the Curious Creatures, a temporary gallery with a similar theme to the last. On the left is an African lungfish that's perfected the game of hide and seek. From Indonesia, probably not able to hide well at all, is their friendly Burmese python, one of the world's largest and longest snakes, frequent to Southeast Asia and invasively to Florida. They can grow over 20 feet and rumple snakeskin here is only about halfway. I say he might have trouble hiding not because he's always so close to his adoring fans, but because his albino coloration would make him stand out to hunters and other predators in the wild. In the trapezoidal Caribbean are blue-headed wrasse and spotted trunkfish. And on the right, the eye-popping peacock mantis shrimp, whose punch has an acceleration quicker than a 22 caliber bullet, a force that can smash through shells like a lightning-fast crab mallet. In another corner, there are wooden boxes filled with shark and whale parts. And the section extends into another room where you can capture a very memorable selfie. And the last curious creature is the Middle Eastern Veiled Chameleon who's famously able to change all sorts of colors as a disguise and can laterally compress their bodies to appear thinner and more like a branch. And within this room is a preview of our next stop, the Stingray Bay, a name that's worn out and overused, but the exhibit itself is far from the typical circular touch tank. At 15 feet deep and 84,000 gallons, it's Ripley's second biggest thing. The bay is populated with small sharks like bonnet heads and medium-sized rays like cownose and southern stingrays. The usual lineup for these kinds of tanks, but the ones that mixes things up are the spotted eagle rays. With the tail, they can get up to 16 feet long and spread their wings 10 feet out. This puts them in second place behind the mantas as the largest of the oceanic stingrays. Contradicting the aquarium's overall quick pacing, here instead you're encouraged to take a break, sit down, and maybe even go grab a bite to eat and enjoy the view. And when you're done, you can head on over to the Penguin Playhouse, the most fun you might ever have with an ocean bird. A 2010 edition that may not be the biggest of its kind, but it could be the most interactive, and you could say it's the most fully loaded. It has several nesting caves, an artificial wave machine, an accessible glass floor that moves this party outside and connects to an outdoor exhibit featured with curved glass and behind is a wonderful view of the Cliff Branch River. There's yet another chance to get a fun photo 
there's a keeper presentation station, a room for chicks, and you can crawl through 30,000 gallons of temperate salt water and pop up in the middle of the exhibit. Though the tunnel is best fit for someone that's 5'3 and not 6'2. If you'd like to see them without a visit, you can check out the aquarium's very own live penguin cam. And that was the last fresh exhibit to our eyes, but the finale is the Touch Array Bay. The main stingray tank shallows towards its backside and creates a lagoon where shark pups are temporarily netted off. We saw bonnet heads on our visit and also where just about everyone can gently pet their favorite silky skinned creatures. A perfect end to the Ripley's Aquarium of the Smokies. As usual, let me know what you thought and where you think you'd rank it on your list. Stay tuned for more and thank you for watching Zoo Tours.